All right, guys. Let's, uh, I'm going to give everybody a few seconds to get on here. Uh, so I've entitled this, I uh, just want to give you a quick word of encouragement real quick. Uh, I think this is it's kind of just jumped in my spirit here over the last five or ten minutes. Uh, so I'm going to be talking to you about preaching good versus doing good. Again, I'm going to talk about preaching good or doing good. Um, I notice a lot of people, we have a perspective in the body of Christ that if I can just preach really good, uh, ministers are really bad about this. If we can preach really good, then we're going to win more souls to the Lord. We're going to win more influence uh, to the kingdom and we're going to attract more people to the kingdom. So again, that's why I've entitled this preaching good or doing good. But I'm going to read a ver some verses here. This is Matthew chapter, or I'm sorry, First Peter chapter 2, verse 13. Hey guys, God bless you this morning. It says, therefore submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God. Notice it says, for this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Okay, and in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your what? Good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And then in the New Testament, it says that Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Guys, I propose to you that good preaching is, listen, I'm not, I'm not criticizing good preaching. I love some good preaching, some anointed preaching uh, that, that, that makes, you know, makes me want to stand up and shout and amen and get fired up and encourages me, edifies me and strengthens me, uh, exhorts me, rebukes me when needed. We need that as the body. Um, but there comes a time yeah, what good is it? What profit is it for? I, I would say 98% of the people that are on this broadcast right now uh, are not called to be behind a pulpit, but, but but are called to be behind a desk or behind a cash register. Come on, somebody or uh, in a in a uh, in a retail or in a restaurant or in an office or in a warehouse, or whatever the circumstance may be. Whatever your marketplace job is, that's where you're called and not to be behind a pulpit. So you can preach all day long, and, and you may think you sound good, and you stand in front of the mirror, and you're preaching a good sermon, and you're, you're taking up an offering and giving an offering to yourself because it's so good that it's making you shout out of your shoes. But when you go to work, let me ask you a question. Are you submitting yourself to the ordinance of men? Are you doing good? Or are you the disgruntled Christian? Look, I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've went to uh, a workplace and I got around other Christians. I got around other believers or so-called professed Christians that sound just like the world. They cuss everybody out. You know, I remember one time I was at a restaurant. This was years ago when I first got saved. I worked at an Arby's uh, back in Kentucky. And I was behind, I was one of the guys in the back, I was, uh, in, I was a shift coordinator and training coordinator. So I was back here making and training other employees and making sandwiches or whatnot. And I saw this couple whom I knew and I knew where they went to church and I saw them coming in and, and you know, I walked, I watched them come in the door and I got tied up and started doing this and everything. And all of a sudden I heard all this commotion up front. Hey, Tammy. Um, so I heard all this commotion uh, up front and I and I heard all these these people cussing and swearing up front and I said my god man what is going on up there and I looked up there and it was the couple that I knew from the church that that I was familiar where they went to but they were cussing out the cashier and I'm like wow how sad and then and then I couldn't tell you how many times I've been to Walmart and I see couples or or an individual that I knew went to church with who spoke in tongues had their praise on, come on, was worshiping before the Lord. They were they were they were flopping around, rolling around the floor in the Holy Ghost. And then they go to Walmart and they're cussing out the cashier or somebody behind them or whatever. Guys, listen, again, I don't care how good you preach, how good you praise, how good you shout, how good you do whatever you do in the church, but if you go out 
and you're not submissive to the ordinance of men. You're disobedient to your co-workers or to your, to your place of employment. You cuss out all your co-workers. Come on. You look like the world, talk like the world. You act no different than the world. Um, again, this is why Jesus said in Matthew chapter five, he said, if you, he says, you are light and salt. Uh, he said, you're a salt of the earth, but if you lose your savor, then you're good for nothing but to be thrown out and to be trampled on under feet by men. You're good for nothing because you've lost your savor. He says, you're the light of the world. So let your light so shine among men again, that they may see your works and glorify the father, which is in heaven. So we've got a lot of believers guys that are, they're, they're dropping the ball in the marketplace. Um, they're putting on a show in the private place, but they're dropping the ball in the marketplace. So something's going on. We're missing the mark here somewhere between the private place and the marketplace. And I'm going to tell you, um, if, if, if my time in the private place doesn't transform me to the point where my language is changed in the marketplace, where my walk is changed in the marketplace, uh, and where I'm not able to, 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 to drop these things and do these things that everybody else is doing, then I, then I need to stay in the private place a little bit longer. Come on. I need to stay in the fire a little bit longer. I need to stay on the altar a little bit longer. I need to stay in his word a little bit longer. I need to stay in prayer a little bit longer because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. His presence comes. It sets the captives free. So guys, we're missing the mark. So again, it comes back on us. Uh, I'm tired. We can't blame the pastor. We can't blame the leadership. We can't blame the church. We can't blame all these things. Ultimately, again, it comes down to the, our personal relationship uh, with Christ. And are we spending enough time in his word that his word is abiding in him and we're abiding in him and we're bearing much fruit? Are we spending enough time in his presence that... Um, Listen, if we, you know, I'm, the economy is up and down, up and down, and people are, you know, I talked about this yesterday. There's a contagion of fear and, and gloom and doom expectations. But if we spend time in his presence and we spend time in his word, we suddenly realize that we're not dependent upon the kings of the earth. We're not dependent upon the, the Wall Street and the marketplace. And uh, we're not depending on the wealth of this world. But we know that he is Jehovah Jireh. And we know that he said he is our provider. He says in his word that the, the gold and silver is mine, saith the Lord, the cattle on a thousand hills, the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. We know that David said, I was young and now I'm old and yet I've yet to seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg of bread. Come on, somebody. He, Paul said, I know that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we got to get these words in us guys we've got to get the word of the lord in our heart again david said i hide the word of the lord in my heart that i may not sin against thee so what i'm trying to say is and i'm going to share your personal testimony real quick and then i'm gonna get off here i remember when i was working at that restaurant i, I met two individuals one individual uh, one of my dear friends steve uh who at the time wasn't serving the lord and i was sowing seed and i was i was i was just testifying of my walk with the Lord. And one of the first things he noticed, he says, I noticed that you didn't cuss. He said, I noticed that you were different than everybody else. And I was sowing seed into his life. And then about four years had passed since I worked with him. And I was at an apartment a complex in Louisville, Kentucky that we moved into there. This was years ago. And one day I was walking, my wife and I were walking down the street because everything was in close proximity. And all of a sudden I ran into this guy and he ran up to me. He recognized me, did I, but I didn't recognize him. And he came up to me, he says, and he knew my name. He says, Ricky, he said, do you know who I am? And I said, I said, well, not really. Can you refresh my memory? And he said, my name's Steve. He said, you, uh, he said, we work together at Arby's uh, in Shepherdsville. He said, you, you were, uh, you witnessed to me. You testified to me. He said, uh, you got me stirred up that day. He said, man, you planted a seed in my heart. He said, uh, later on, about two weeks later, he says, I went to church. I gave my heart to the Lord. I got saved. And he says, I've been serving the Lord ever since. So he said, he said that day you sowed the seed of the word of God in my heart. And man, we rejoiced together. Um, and we began to do Bible studies in his, in our apartment complex right there. So that's when we became really close friends. Okay, so come on, praise God. Again, I let my light so shine among men that they glow. But see, if I would have been 
come on, if I would have compromised, if I would have not been uh, who God had called me to be and I had enough of the world in me and not enough of, of him in me, then I would have not been able to be the influence that God's called me to be. So again, it's not about how good I can preach, but it was about my good works. Again, I talked about that in 1 Peter 2 and Matthew chapter 5. Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So again, and then another story is another individual that I met there, his name was Daniel um, I, I, I witnessed to him. He gave his heart to the Lord and I began to pour into him and disciple him and mentor him. Uh, and about three years later, tragically, he was diagnosed with lymphoma cancer. Uh, he had a wife and a daughter and I watched him go from, he was a pretty big guy. He was about 300 plus pounds and I watched him dwindle all the way down to about 140 pounds and, uh, he died and went on to be with the Lord. Um, but I was able to spend those time, that time with him and pouring out into him. So look, if I would have not been the influence that God called me to be, then I would have never led that man to the Lord. And I believe that he would have died and went, he, and he, he would have died. He would have lost, he would have been lost. And he, I believe he would have went to hell because, um, he was, he was in a very bad state when I met him, had a lot of anger pr problems. He had to get delivered out of. Um, but he loved the Lord again, and I was able to be there at his bedside when he went on to be with the Lord. So again, guys, this is what I'm trying to stress to you today. <clears throat> yes, we're called to heal the oppressed. Yes, we're to lay hands on the sick that they may recover. Yes, we're to cast out devils and raise the dead. And signs and wonders will follow those who believe. But when was the last time <clears throat> that you went about doing good? Now, what am I talking about? When was the last time you went about doing good, um, doing the right thing, um, even if it's little things, guys, it's the little foxes that spoil the fine. So again, and I'm not talking about the secret place, guys, I'm talking about the marketplace, because what we do in private, the Lord knows our heart. He sees all that. But what we do in the marketplace, guys, there's always eyes watching us everywhere we go. Every place we went, I remember uh, <clears throat> a few minutes or a, uh, a while back, I went to get a propane tank at a Walmart and uh, it took them an hour, one hour, literally, I'm not exaggerating, one hour to get me a propane tank that it should have took 10 minutes. And I remember about 30 minutes into this thing, guys, I was starting to, to get aggravated because I'm telling you, one of my weaknesses is, and y'all pray for me, is patience. I started losing my patience and uh, and I kept telling, these people kept telling me, uh, we've got somebody working on it. We've got a manager coming. And then 10 minutes later, and, and nobody would come. And then somebody else would come. We got a manager coming. Somebody's working on it. 10 minutes later, we got somebody. And finally, about after 30 minutes of that mess, I went up and I was on my way up to the management desk at Walmart. And the whole time I was walking, I said, God, I know this is a test. I know this is a test because I, I, this is my not my first rodeo. I know that somehow this is a test and I'm going to pass this test. The devil is not going to get me to lose my victory. He's not going to get me to lose my joy today. It's not worth it. So I went up to the to the uh, management desk and there was a woman standing there and she was a manager. And I said, uh, I said, you know, I said, ma'am, I said, I've been I've been for 30 minutes. I've been standing over waiting just to get a propane tank. And, and I've had three managers tell me that somebody is coming uh, with the key and nobody has yet to show up with the key. So when I told her this, she said, um, <clears throat> uh, why is your name in times? Because it's, uh, again, this is a ministry that the Lord birthed in my heart in 2010 called End Time Headlines, news and headlines from a prophetic perspective in which we present you, uh, again, news and headlines. We present to you the signs and the seasons in which we're in. Uh, one of the, the callings that the Lord has called me to, to do is to be a watchman. Um, and But it, again, I've also pastored. I pastored a church for two years. So uh, this is a ministry. It's not a news agency. A lot of people say, I thought this was a news agency. No, I, I love it, guys, because it's bait. It draws people in, but then they hear the gospel. So y'all wasn't supposed to know that, but I'm just letting you know that that's a little secret about this ministry. Let me go back to what I'm saying. So I'm talking to this manager and I said, ma'am, I said three people, um, <clears throat> three people were supposed to bring me this key and nobody's come. And so she says, oh, well, that's upper management. 
let me get somebody else to get on the key. And but guys, by this time, I'm telling you, I'm feeling like the Tabasco sauce rising up in me. Because you got to understand, I'm Italian. My last name is Scaparo. There's, I have Italian blood in me, and Italians are not very patient. You know, <clears throat> come on, how many seen some of them old movies? And you will make you an offer you can't refuse. So, you know, I'm starting to get my patience is running thin. So I'm, I'm so close to just, you know, making some kind of comment or whatever. And about that time, here comes somebody from OCI. Uh, and OCI is the uh, is the place uh, that uh, the place of worship that we attend in Cleveland, Tennessee. And here comes somebody that works at Walmart from OCI, and they're standing right beside me when all this is going on. They say, "Oh, hey, Ricky, how are you?" And I'm like, the first thing I laughed, guys, when I saw him, I laughed because I I said I knew it. I said, I'm telling you. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew that the devil was trying to set me up because and the Lord was it was allowing me to be tested. Because, again, guys, I'm telling you, there's always somebody that's watching you everywhere you go. I remember years ago, Jesse Duplantis preached a message one time. He said, you better embarrass sin before it embarrasses you. Let me say that again. Again, Jesse Duplantis said this years ago. He said, you better embarrass sin before it embarrasses you. And what he meant by that was... <clears throat> When you're getting ready to screw up, you can take it to the bank that the devil will make sure someone's there to make sure that they see you screw up. So again, guys, keep this in mind. Now watch, I'm going to preach this and I'm about to go to lunch. So Lord, uh, just keep this in mind. Help me to remember this, that your kingdom come and your will be done. So whatever happens today, I know that I'm in the hands of the Lord, but I'm telling you, Listen, you start preaching on patience, and I'm telling you, all hell's going to break loose. That'll be the day that you're in a five-hour uh, traffic jam. You start preaching on money, and that'll be the day that the refrigerator repairman shows up at your door because your refrigerator went out, and he says, we ain't never seen nothing like this happen before. Come on, you start preaching on tithing and giving. That'll be the day that your tires are recalled. That'll be the day that your engine goes out, and you realize that you just went, you're just three miles over that your warranty, and it just so happens that that happened on that day. Come on, you start preaching on healing, and that'll be the day you go through some freak cold. You're the only one that gets a cold in the middle of the summer. Come on, you start preaching on faith, and you'll get every circumstance come against you to try to get you to doubt. You'll start preaching about marriage, and that'll be when all hell breaks loose in your marriage. That'll be the worst week of your marriage. You'll argue about everything. Come on, somebody. Listen, I, this ain't my first rodeo. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to this. Yes, they are personal experiences. Um, I know none of you all angels ain't never went through anything like that, you know. But, uh, you know, for, for the remnant out there that may have gone through some stuff and that are walking this out, I'm sure they'll amen me and shout me down on that. So, again, let me say it again. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Notice it didn't say his good works. Your good works. Because, yes, we have a personal responsibility. Because we are ambassadors and representatives of Christ. So we've got to let our good works shine that we may glorify him. Notice that we're on earth, but he's in heaven. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when we let our good, our good works shine on earth, it glorifies him in heaven. So guys, we just, we, we've got to get a constant connection. Somehow we've lost our connection. I'm, and where do we get plugged in and connected? Again, it's in the private place. And the, the private place is where we get the Holy Ghost chiropractor that comes in and gives us an alignment so that when we step out of the private place, that our walk is straight in the public place. Thank you. Wow, that's good. Come on, Holy Ghost. That's good stuff. So again, in private place, the Holy Spirit gives us a, a spiritual alignment so that when we go back out into the private, into the public place, that we're walking upright, we're walking straight, and we're letting our good works be manifest before men. Amen. So guys, I just wanted to give you that quick word. So God bless you. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, again, go back to the marketplace, guys, and, and glorify 
uh, let people be uh, let people see your good works so that your father in heaven is be to be glorified. So um, I'll come back on here and do an, a question and answer. I'm seeing a lot of question and answers so, uh, of coming up here or questions. So let me, I'll go to lunch, come back. We'll come back on. We'll do a question and answer. Uh, so hold that, hold those thoughts, guys, because I really got to go. Um, and we'll do that. So God bless you guys. Love you.